Well, welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nano Lathes at Dawn. I remain your host, Shadow Fury333, and this match not going to be Iceland. Apparently, Hokomoko dropped the Iceland game, so instead, Hokomoko and Spiderpluck on Vitra. Apparently, there are still some connection issues, but it finishes. So, go with that. Hokomoko going for Gunship Factory. A little unusual. Normally, they do go for amphibious bots, but they might be doing that as their land factory halfway through the game. And Spiderpluck going for spiders. Which, this is kind of a dream game for me, since gunships and spiders are, like, my two favorite factories in the game. So, this is going to be awesome. Or hope it'll be awesome, because I really don't want to disappoint. Anyway, Blastwing to flee. I mean, just flees from Spadapluk, because you do that for scouting. And Blastwing from Hokomoko for a little bit of harassment, trying to figure out where Spadapluk is. And will not be able to do a lot of damage. The defender... Oh, wow, the defender actually missed! Ouch! That's not the place you want a wind generator to be built, unfortunately. Spadapluk spending a lot of time repairing that, not building more wind generators. So Hokomoko, nicely done, slowing down Spadapluk's economy production. That'll help a lot. Like, Spadapluk at this point, they should have about three or four wind generators by now, and they only have the one. And they have to rebuild this metal extractor. So that was actually really, that was more effective than it looked. As Hokomoko right now, look what Hokomoko has. 14 energy to Spadapluk's 8. All because Spadapluk was forced to repair that wind generator. I mean, really, it might have been better for them to just abandon the wind generator, go to the other side, and build them over here where it wasn't burning. But they didn't. So that worked out well for Hokomoko. So yeah, Spadapluk, also a bit wary now, getting three defenders up because they aren't sure if there's going to be more blast wings. There aren't, actually. There's just going to be wasps. I mean, at this point, Hokomoko going for pretty much an economic setup. In fact, going for, not economic, well, production-oriented setup, but going very quickly into Kolokibot Factory. And yeah, that's, this is actually a really good start for Hokomoko. Spadapluk, I mean... The defenders are still good. The thing is, the Cloaky Bots will probably be first off used for Glaives, so defenders will help against Glaives too. But right now, Spadapluk is kind of paranoid, understandably, and also behind in energy. But that's wind for you. Wind has a tendency to be a little bit volatile. 0.4 to 215 is good, though. That's a pretty healthy amount of energy for wind, and Spadapluk will be able to get ahead from time to time. But Okamoko... Getting a second factory going, that's basically what they're spending their economic advantage on. And wow, that... <sighs> At some point I want to basically... Because apparently in the new engine, this is a shader, this nanoframe effect. It's now shadered, and that's so cool. But there's stuff I want to do with it that I don't have time to do for a while. I won't have time to do for a while, but I, I've i wanted to mess with that for a long time. And I'm glad it's finally possible. It's just, I can't right now <laughs> since I'm busy with stuff. Probably once the Dark Souls Let's Play is done, which will hopefully be in a couple weeks. Actually, maybe even before then. I might even get a lot of free time before then. I don't know. I've just been really busy recently. But yeah, I just want to point that out because it's kind of neat that it's been updated. I think I pointed that out last week, too. And I also think that there's not... They aren't using that engine right now. There's some weirdness going on. At any rate, it doesn't really matter. The point is, at this point, Hokomoko and Spadapluk about even. In fact, Hokomoko's switch over to Clokibot Factory is starting to be a bit suspect because Spadapluk... I mean, they're starting to get ahead economically. And also, Spadapluk is getting a lot more territory. Despite the initial paranoia, Spadapluk's actually managing to get out of this. Tarantula's given them enough confidence to get out of there and just build up. Hokomoko, on the other hand, of course, they can build up whenever they'd like. They have the Wasp, they have... No real concern of being raided, so they are building up relatively rapidly. But still, that is going to be about even. Hokomoko's initial harassment still giving them a little bit of an energy advantage, but not much. Mostly that's just the wind variance. And Glaive's trying to get rid of the Tarantula. Not going to do too well. Tarantula have 1200 HP, so it's going to take a lot of Glaive power. And there's a fair amount of defenses coming in here. Not that the Venoms are... Sorry, the Fleas can help. Venoms would help. Venoms are on the way. That'll help a lot. And, of course, Defenders everywhere, which get rid of Glaives no problem. So right now, Hokomoko might want to continue going for the economic setup they were going for. Like, not go for harassment as much, because... I mean, unless they manage to position it properly, Spadapluk has been expanding more slowly, because Spadapluk has been defending while expanding. Hokomoko, on the other hand, they've been expanding pretty raw, but they've stopped. Their commander's idle, they've got a bit more going into production in the main base. 
But otherwise, they aren't really focusing on their economy all that much. Their harassment, if it works out really well, great. And I mean, to an extent, it is working out because it is forcing Spider-Pluck to build defenses. So Spider-Pluck is expanding more slowly than they'd have to. But at this point, it, it's even. Like, it's... Spider-Pluck and Hokomoko have the same economy. Just about. Hokomoko has slightly better energy, but otherwise... Spider-Pluck and Hokomoko are even, and I think at this point, yeah, wind's just about dead. So that's mainly why Spider-Pluck's energy is so low. And Spider-Pluck is getting more solar collectors, so it's not like that's going nowhere. At any rate, this... Yeah, Spider-Pluck's getting a lot of territory. And Hokomoko is... Just... I'm not sure what they're trying to do. I don't know if they're sure what they're trying to do. Like, they clearly want to harass, but they're also in a position where they're dealing with a heavily defended player on a map which, frankly, doesn't support mass expansion a huge amount. You can't really contain on this map. It's very easy to get around to contain because there's no choke point that you're going to have to worry about, especially with a spider player. But even bots, like, this is all bot passable. Almost all this. This is bot passable. This is all bot passable. There's a tiny little bit of purple, but basically it's all bot passable. So there's not really a choke point. There's very soft choke points in that going uphill is generally a disadvantage, but the hills are also relatively small. So this is just about a flat map. And Venom's coming in here doing what they do best, which is messing with you. But yeah, now it's about to look at the mid level, like they're in the middle of the map. A few sides here to try to deal with stuff. But this wasp is walking to its death. Hokomoku not even paying attention. That wasp is dead. I wonder what it looks like when it dies. Oh, that's what the wreckage looks like. Okay. I don't think I've ever seen wasp wreckage before. But yeah, that is... Sides coming in here. Going for the commander. Going straight for the commander. I think they're going to get a kill. Yeah, they're going to get the kill. They're all going to die. In the oh, no. One of them survived. How about that? Is it going to stay survived? It's got eight seconds left. The defender... Does not see it. Yeah, one scythe gets away. And in the middle of the map, though, Spadopluk is taking that hard. And of course, the question is, do you attack the defender? And at this point, it's, I think, safe. Oh, no, it's not. There's another defender behind it. Yeah, that would be suicide. Full health scythe, yes. But not a damage scythe. And Scythe taking a huge... Unnecessary risk, actually. That's death. Well, it's not really distracting from the Brawler, either. So, unfortunately, Hokomoko having to pull back. And Svadopluk... They've taken the western side, just about. Hokomoko getting a bunch of Rockos, though. This is going to be the one thing that'll give Svadopluk some trouble. If enough fleas get built, and it looks like Svadopluk not even building anything, actually. Their army is completely idle. What? Oh, going for caretakers, but good idea, but why are you not building from the factory at the same time? There's enough money. I don't know what Spadapluk's doing. I mean, they've lost their commander, so their eastern expansion has been thwarted. And Hokomoko, now with the rock, was able to push back. I was thinking, I mean, I was thinking it was problematic because Spadapluk was taking so much territory, but now it's, it's kind of fallen behind and there were no fleas to deal with this. Spadapluk going for an air factory as well. I'm really surprised they're not building from the spider factory at the same time. Are they trying to power out something big? Because, I guess, Wyverns? That's the one big thing I could think of you could power out using this. But this doesn't make any sense. This is very team game. Which does not make sense in 1v1. There's, like, if they were trying to power out a crab super quick, maybe? Or trying to power out a wyvern super quick? Or really, this would make sense for striders. You know, get a strider hub and then power out a Dante or something. And just push through with that. Like, get it up in a minute. Or less. And they are going for wyvern. Okay, so that does make a bit of sense. They are storing a bunch of cash to get the wyvern faster than they should but having enough production. That's 47 and a half metal worth of production on 30 metal income with like a 1500 metal storage or so. Yeah, that, that makes sense to get a wyvern. That's 2000 metal. And yeah, you can get two or three wyverns actually before you run into issues with economy with income. And then I guess the idea is just to drop it in the middle of all these rockers, which are pretty bunched up. Quite dangerously so actually. Don't know if that's the idea. They might be used for an in, for an invasion, for actually just going in, or intrusion, I suppose. No, they're going straight for the Rockos, getting rid of a couple. Ugh. I don't know. I don't really think that's the best idea. Phoenixes would almost be better. And honestly, I don't even know if Air Factory is the way to go here. 
Even Thunderbird. Although, like I said, fleas. That's the way you want to go. Get a bunch of fleas. Wipe out the Rockos that way. There isn't much else to deal with. That's three more Rockos gone. I mean, it's attrition. But at this point, Hokomoko is pushing in so quickly. I don't think attrition's going to be fast enough. At least not at that rate. Another Wyvern, maybe, if there's like two or three Wyverns doing this. And there we go. There are the fleas. That's the real answer. At least one of the real answers. If the Wyvern... Oh, I was going to say, if the Wyvern gets rid of the Defender or smashes up all these defenders, that would do a lot of damage. Because right now, the problem for the fleas is the defenders. They can't get through those. But yeah, I don't know what Spotiplex trying to do. Normally, you only store if you're if you're trying to do it properly. You only store if you're trying to build up something really quickly. But I feel like Spotiplex isn't really doing that. Getting rid of the commander, though, which means the chainsaw is no longer there, which reduces a lot of threat. Unfortunately, the defenders are still there, but I think the fleas... Okay, the fleas can't get rid of them. Oh, no, they can't. No, not quite in time. And the Rockos are still in play. Bit of a harder time for Hokomoku to expand on the borders, but I think Hokomoku just cares really about wiping out Spotiplex's army at this point. And Spotiplex just got you know, these Wolverines, and that's about it. There's not much else. I don't really see a whole lot. I mean, there's... More damage being dealt, getting rid of units here and there with Wolverns. It's not bad, but like I said, there isn't much time. Hokomoku can pretty much just walk in here. You know, get rid of a few defenders, get rid of a few razors. That's about it. The ground forces are pretty much irrelevant. I mean, the Rockos are going to be torn apart by the fleas if there are enough fleas. But there are glaives to defend the fleas. Sorry, defend against the fleas. So there isn't really the combination. This is Phoenixes would probably make sense, but I don't see that being built anytime soon. So yeah, this is kind of coming down to just not having enough forces, like at all, just ha not having enough of an army earlier on. Like Svetoplik has all this metal in storage. There's at least a thousand metal in storage, which is not units. Could have been a crab. Could have been. A, could have been a bunch of hermits. Could have been anything, but it's nothing right now. And more importantly, it was nothing back when Spider-Book's army was larger and could deal with it. However, it looks like Spider-Book finally managing to fend this off. They had the fleas, they have the venoms, they have it all together. So the rockers are dying to the to the fleas, and of course, glaives to defend are dying to the venoms. So at least there's something. But overall, and yeah, two wyverns that's definitely effective. That's helping out. But even then, that's almost overkill. I mean, have these even paid for themselves? Okay, this one has paid for itself at this point. Second one, no, though. Second one's still working on paying for itself. But it looks like Spotted Book is rebuilding. I like to see that. Mentioned last game, it's important to rebuild destroyed metal extractors, and that is what Spotted Book is doing. Okamoko is not, however, actually building this metal extractor, despite the fact that they're right there, or reclaiming, which could be their undoing, although at this point, it's really a matter of whether or not Spotted Book can tear apart Okamoko's forces in time, and bombing tridents in the air, I mean, you can do that. It's effective, not so much for cost, but still, it helps out a bit. Not a huge amount. I mean, really, Hokomoko's tridents weren't doing anything except getting rid of the Wyverns, but then the Wyverns are dealing a lot of attrition. And Hokomoko, I should say, is not line-moving. They are point-moving. It's just this center, the problem with the center of the map, it's not a choke point, but there are some areas that are easier to path on than others, and I think units do try to stay in areas that are faster to move in. They don't necessarily have to, but I get the impression that they tend to. I never really tested that thoroughly myself. I just was noticing it that they're focusing on the center ramp where it's easier to get around. And actually, at this point, it doesn't even matter. As Fadabluk able to start wiping away this force here... Man, these Wolverines are causing a lot of problems. They're also all repaired and everything, so this is going to be very difficult to get through. Unfortunately, the chainsaw was a bit further in the front lines. If it was further back, it would have been done by now. At the same time, though, Hokomoko is still trying to harass as much as they can, but Spider-Book with the economic advantage, mostly due to reclaim, but still, economic advantage, managing to get the center back. And that's... That's kind of it. I mean, at this point, Spider-Book, they've managed to retake this. They were in a defensive position, but the Wolverines actually paid off. I mean, that's cool. I wasn't sure if they would or not, but yeah, it turns out they've paid off, and now at this point, Spider-Book, with the AA of their own, 
just to clear out the sky and make sure Hokomoko can't easily get a much tridents going, because the Swifts will take care of them, just by numbers. And if the Swifts don't, well, the Wolverines will, because there aren't enough of them. That's the thing. So at this point, the western side, I mean, just cleaning up entirely the center. There's a few Rockos left, but flees out to deal with them. Spotterbluck didn't quite have the army they needed at the time, but they still got the army they needed eventually. A bit of a risky move, but it seems to have worked out. I mean, the Flea's doing a fantastic job getting rid of the Rockos, as expected. And as for the center, I mean, well, your standard... I mean, mostly Venoms, honestly. Not even just a standard... I was going to say a standard Venom something mix, but no, it's Venom and Recluse. But that's working out fine. Like between the Fleas and the Recluses, the Rockos have no hope. Hokomoko, what are they going for? Going for more Trinus, trying to get rid of the Ravern. Going for more Glaze Rockos. Still trying to just push the same army composition. Hoping the Glaze will get rid of the Fleas enough, but it's not working out. At this point, I would almost say Warrior... Nah, it wouldn't be a better option, because the problem is that you're dealing with the Ravern. And Zeus isn't a great option. Shoot, I'm not really sure what the better option would be. I almost want to say, well, not many tick. I mean, really, the problem is the Wolverine. Those Wolverines really skew everything. Because, I mean, what are you supposed to do? Because the Wolverines are... They're stopping any massive units from getting rid of this other massive units. And because of splash damage, I guess you could spread out the Glaives. But that's still problematic because of the, rock, because of the Venoms. And the Rockos can't easily deal with them. But yeah, it's hard to deal with... Hard to deal with Wolverines. Not impossible, mind you. I mean, it's just a matter of getting a bunch of Tridents, or not even Tridents necessarily, but a bunch of AA of some kind, and then using them to get rid of the Wolverine all in one go, but keeping them separated. Because the thing is, the Wolverine's big strength there was splash damage. How much excess was there? No excess! Congratulations, both of you! You apparently did not excess at all. Not metal, anyway. Oh, right, but Svadopluk had not used all their metal because much of their metal was still in storage. Still had... actually used quite a bit less. Hokomoko was ahead economically for most of the game. Although the metal income was about the same. That was a very even game. Really, it just came down to the fact that those Wolverines were able to splash away everything, and Hokomoko's forces were very clumped up, allowing the Wolverines to do huge amounts of damage. I think the main problem there was tactics, not unit composition. Because I'm trying to think of what other unit composition you could go for, but no, that made sense for Clokibot Factory. Glaive Rocco makes a lot of sense in this composition. It's just a matter of how to use them, because the Roccos need to be getting rid of the Venoms, but avoiding the Fleas and Recluses, while the Glaives need to hit the Fleas and Recluses while avoiding the Venoms. It's very tricky that way. But unfortunately, those Wolverines really skewed it in favor of Spider because any clumps of units would just die. Didn't matter what type they were, they just die. And there's not a whole lot of high alpha anti air that that Cloakie has to get rid of the Wolverines, and the high alpha anti air that gunships have. I mean, I guess Rapiers would help to slow them down. That's the only thing you could do other than Tridents would be Rapiers. Which isn't a huge amount of damage, but it does slow down the Wolverines, so at least it reduces the frequency, but not by much. Although I guess it does keep them in range long enough for the Tridents to have a better shot at killing them. So I could see, I could see Rapier Trident working out okay. And also Rapier would help with the ground forces. But yeah, that's just really tough to deal with. There were no Tarantulas, I don't think. I think that one Tarantula died, so yeah, that's the one thing, is... Although there were defenders and such around the map, after this Razor was destroyed, there actually weren't a lot of anti-air for Spadabluk, so Hokomoko could have gone heavy on Rapier Trident, just straight Rapier Trident, drop all Cloakie production, and then wipe out the force from the air, wipe out the spider force from the air, force Spadabluk to make more AA, and then that would... Before the Swiss were made, I should say, when the Wolverines started getting built, and then once the Wolverines were wiped out, switch back to Cloakie production, and then take the ground again. Maybe. That seems a bit of a stretch, though. There's a lot of variables there. A lot of things that could go wrong for both sides. At any rate, that was a pretty good match, though. The last match is going to be between RAR and Adam 2. So anyone complaining about the lack of RAR matches in recent weeks, there you go. Match between RAR and Adam 2 on Ravaged. Be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned.